Hi everyone, we are back and starting a new unit. We are talking about polynomials and we'll be discussing polynomials throughout um, and kind of what their behaviors look like and what they are. So some features of polynomials are that they are continuous, meaning you're gonna have a graph that goes something like this, right? It doesn't stop. So if you have a graph like this, uh, something like that, that is not a polynomial. Oop, not a polynomial, but this is a polynomial. Additionally, a polynomial has smooth curves. So something like this, that would be a polynomial, but like an absolute value function, that would not be a polynomial, okay? So a polynomial function, what is it exactly? Our formal definition is let n be a non-negative integer and let a sub n, a sub n minus one, da, 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 to a sub two, a sub one, be real numbers with a sub n not equal to zero. The function, f of x equals a sub n, x to the n plus a sub n minus 1, x to the n minus 1 plus, da, 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 all the way down to a sub 0, is a polynomial function of x with degrees n. So what does that really mean? Basically, these are just our equations. You've seen them before. It's a cubic. It's a quadratic. It's, um, you know, anything like if you have a polynomial to the fifth degree, that's a polynomial. We've seen them, but now we're just kind of defining them. So... When a polynomial um, is written in this form, f of x equals x to the n power, that's called a power function. And when n is even, that is going, that's going to be similar to, oh, sorry, that should be a 2, to uh, f of x equals x squared, similar to that. And um, it's going to be reflected symmetric to the y-axis. Symmetric to y-axis. So if it's even, you know, maybe we would have a graph and it might look something like this, right? Like it's a little too flat to be a true quadratic, but it's even. Um, and actually, I don't know why I drew it like this, but it's symmetric to the y-axis. So it'd be like this right? A little too flat. Ugh, what a terrible picture. But if n is odd, it's going to be similar, similar to f of x equals x cubed, which you might remember looks something like this, something kind of like that. And it's symmetric to the origin. Symmetric to the origin. And this should be familiar with you. Even symmetric to the y-axis, odd symmetric to the origin. We saw that before when we were doing even and odd functions, remember? Okay, we have something called the um, leading coefficient test. So our leading coefficient is that number in front, right? If n is odd, n is going to be that um, our exponent. If it's odd and a sub n is greater than zero, that graph falls to the left and rises to the right. So that's gonna look like, you're gonna have a graph that looks something like it's falling to the left and it's rising to the right, okay? But if a is less than zero, your graph is gonna rise to the left and fall to the right. So maybe you would have something like it's rising to the left and it's falling to the right, something like that, okay? Now, if n is even, so if it would be like x squared, x to the fourth, whatever. Okay, so we talked about if n is odd, and then if n is even, um, a sub n is greater than zero, the graph rises to the left and to the right, so you could have, I guess, something kind of like this, right? And if a sub n is less than zero, then the graph, graph falls to the left and to the right, so you would have kind of maybe something like this, right? Okay, so let's actually use this information to sketch some graphs. Here we are given f of x equals negative x to the fifth. So when we look at that, we know that the degree is odd, right? Because the degree is five in this case. And so this is graph is going to be similar to y equals x cubed, okay? Uh, and then 
because we have this negative coefficient here, that is going to reflect on the x-axis. So that's going to reflect on the x-axis. So what that means is usually our parent graph, well, kind of parent in this situation, would be like this, right? That would be our y equals x cubed. But since this is uh, our new graph, we're going to have here, it's going to reflect, flip up, so it's going to come. And then the higher the, the exponent, the flatter it becomes in between here, right? So I'm going to make a note of that. Higher the exponent, the flatter the, I guess I'm going to call it the curve, but it's kind of just this smushy part in the middle here, all right? Okay, um, let's do this other one. Here we have f of x equals uh, the quantity x plus 1 to the fourth. Well, that is going to be, so our degree here is even. In this case, it's 4. So it's going to be similar to y equals x squared, okay? That's kind of our, like, base point. And then um, here we've got this plus 1. So that, we remember from our transformations, is going to go left 1, right? So if I draw out this graph, yeah, and I'm just going to do real simple kind of excessively large graph. I'm going to have my base point here at 0, negative 1, and then it's going to be sort of like a quadratic, but rather than that sort of pointed base, it's going to be like a flat base. And I actually probably didn't even make that flat enough, okay? It really almost needs to square off, kind of. All right. Okay, so that's how we do all of that. Uh, really not too complicated. As we move on, we're going to talk about, for our next lesson, finding the zeros, and uh, yeah, then we'll move forward. Have a good day. Bye.